Hi and welcome to a Calculus 1 video on linear approximations. So what the derivative can do is it can actually help us to approximate using the equation of a tangent line. It can help us approximate a particular value. So let me show you this example right here. So if we were looking at the function f of x equals 1 over x, so that's that tan sort of graphed function here, and we wrote the equation of the line at the value of x equals 2, what happens then is anything that's really close to 2 at x equals 2 is going to give us a really good approximation for that actual function's value at 2. So to the right over here is a zoomed in graph of just this little boxed area. So what I can see is that if I want to approximate f of 2.1, Sometimes the function can be very difficult to work with, but a tangent line is just a linear equation. So it allows me to easily be able to substitute in that 2.1 and go ahead and calculate what that approximate value is. And you can see here, my approximate value is that 0.475 number, and the actual value is 0.47619, so they're very, very close. Now the important thing to note about linear approximations is if I wrote the equation of the tangent line at x equals 2, then a linear approximation would not be f of 5.1. I cannot use the equation of the tangent line at 2 to estimate something that's really far away from 2. So it is important to note that your point that you're going to um, approximate or that x value that you want the approximate y value for needs to be really close to your tangent line where that point of tangency occurred. So let's take a look at how this works. Now you may see some different formulas or some different representations but again if I remind you that you're just trying to write the equation of the tangent line at that value then you're going to use that equation of that tangent line to estimate what the function's value would be at that point that's really close to this point of tangency. So let's just go ahead and write the equation of the tangent line for the function f of x equals 3x cubed minus 2x plus 1 when a equals 1. So I will find the first derivative. I will find the first derivative at 1 and that gives me the slope of the tangent line. So I will write the equation of the tangent line I will use point slope form since that's what we're used to and then I will show you the link that we have to this linear approximation function. So it's y minus the y from my point. Well see I only was given the x value so I need to put a equals 1 or the value of 1 into my function. So what is f of 1? So 2. Okay so y minus 2 equals my slope times x minus the x value. And if I distribute that 7, that would be minus 7 and then add the 2 over minus 5. So what I'm going to say here is a linear function of x is going to be 7x minus 5. So now anything near this a equals 1 value, if I want to approximate a linear uh, approximation for 0.9 for example or 0.95 or 1.05 something like that I would say you know within in this case maybe a tenth or two tenths I'm going to get a pretty good approximation for that. So I can now say what is the linear approximation for 1.1 and I'm just calculating this in a linear equation so the benefit is the the computation should be pretty straightforward. So this should be 2.7 and so my approximation would be that it's about 2.7 as a y value. And certainly you could check this out graphically. So one thing I will insert in here is that we just did this with really not a whole lot of new information. I just probably taught you this part over here, but all of the rest of it was based on can you write the equation of that tangent line. So I'm going to squeeze something in here and say that this formula is the same as this right here. Okay, well how is this the same? Well, if I add this 2 over here, that 2, I'll highlight it in yellow, was the y value from my point. Okay, 
So that's this value right here. Then f prime of a is the slope of the tangent line, right? And this was the x value from my point. So really, they're not telling you anything new. They're just putting the linear approximation notation into the equation of your tangent line. So we're just going to kind of keep doing what we know how to do. So let's take a look at number two. If I'm given g of x equals x times sine of 2x, and I want to talk about the value surrounding a equals pi over 4, then we're going to use that linear approximation to calculate what would the value be for 9 pi over 32? Is that close to pi over 4? Yes, because pi over 4 is the same thing as 8 pi over 32. So it's only 1 pi over 32 away. So this will give me, if I write the equation of a tangent line, a really good approximation for 9 pi over 32. So let's go ahead and start. I'm going to go ahead and find what is g of pi over 4, because we remember we do need a point and a slope, right? So in order to write the equation of a line, oftentimes we started with something like that. What's the slope of your tangent line and what's your point? I know my point is going to be pi over four something. So let's figure out what that something is. So I'll put pi over four in for x. Two times pi over four is pi over two. Sine of pi over two is one. So I do get pi over four. Okay, so let's find the first derivative. So g prime of x, I'm going to work my way towards finding the slope of the tangent line at that point. So I have to use product rule, right? So derivative of x is 1, I'll leave sine of 2x alone, plus now x, and the derivative of sine 2x is cosine of 2x, don't forget chain rule, times 2. And I'm looking specifically for g prime at pi over 4. Okay, I'm looking for the slope of the tangent line at that value. So it'll be sine of 2 pi over 4, or pi over 2, plus pi over 4 times cosine 2 pi over 4, so that's pi over 2 times 2. So I have g prime of pi over 4, or the slope of my tangent line um, at pi over 4, is going to be 1 plus 2 pi over 4, so pi over 2, and cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so this will be a 1. So the slope of my tangent line is a 1. So let's write the equation of our tangent line at that value. So I have y minus the y from my point equals m times x minus the x from my point. I will distribute. So I have x, this would be minus pi over 4 plus pi over 4. So the equation of my tangent line is y equals x. So again, I'm going to use that to give a good estimate. Well, if I want, so I can put this in terms of linear approximation, L of x equals x. So then if I'm going to use this to give a good approximation for 9 pi over 32, put 9 pi over 32 in for x. So the approximation would be that it's going to be approximately 9 pi over 32. Again, I do think you should maybe check this on your calculator. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so in y equals, go ahead and put x sine of 2x. And then I will go to my table, making sure that I can type in whatever I want. So again, if you go to your second window or table set menu, make sure that that independent variable is on ask, hit enter. And then when you go back to your table, you should be able to type in what you want. If you have values in there, go ahead and just hover over that x value and keep hitting delete until there it's clear like mine if that's how you want it. So the function is in the y equals. So what I'm trying to do is get a good approximation for what is the y value around 9 pi over 32. So let's see how close we are. So if x is 9 pi over 32, what is that y value? And that y value is also almost exactly 9 pi over 32. Again, it's not exact, but it's giving me 0.86659. And right here, I can actually see what 9 pi over 32 is. But if you're not sure, you could also go to your home screen and type that in. So it is very, very close. It's a good approximation. 
And just to repeat, my linear approximation made this problem a lot easier because I didn't have to try to figure out what is the sine of 2 times 9 pi over 32. It's not going to be an angle that we're familiar with, so I'm not going to be able to easily get a good approximation, certainly not in my head. Um, whereas the linear approximation, if you can just find something close to it that you want to focus on, then you can write the equation of the tangent line and get a really good approximation. So let's do that again, but for a logarithm. So this will be the last one for this video. If you're given h of x equals log base 3, of the square root of x squared minus 2. I might want to use some natural log properties here before I even start and say that because this whole thing is really, this argument is to the 1 half power, that can be brought down in front. So I can rewrite and say that this is 1 half log base 3 of x squared minus 2, for example. And then what I might want to do is change this into natural logs so that I can find the derivative a little bit easier. So I'm going to use that change of base formula. Just don't forget that that 1 half is out in front here. So I have 1 half and it's going to be natural log of this argument, x squared minus 2, all over natural log of 3. So really what I have is a coefficient, if you will, of 1 over 2 natural log of 3, which I can rewrite, but I don't have to, times this natural log of x squared minus 2, because now that's over 1. So it's not, oh, and excuse me, it's not h prime. I don't know why I wrote that prime in there. That's just h. Now I'm ready to do the derivative is what I meant to say. Okay, so I'm going to have to figure out at a equals 2 what this value is, and then again I'm looking for a linear approximation that's at 2.01, so it's going to be a really good approximation if I can figure this out. So I'm going to need slope of a tangent line, and I'm going to need a point. I know the point will be 2 something, so let's figure out what that something is. So h of 2 is 1 over 2 natural log of 3, times natural log of 2 squared would be 4 minus 2 is 2. So I can make this look a little bit better. So h of 2 is natural log of 2 over 2 natural log of 3. 2 natural log of 3, remember your natural log properties, that exponent can come up. So this is actually natural log of 3, three squared or natural log of 9. But again, it's it's equivalent either way. All right, so let's go ahead and find the derivative. So h prime of x, I'm going to keep the coefficient, 1 over 2 natural log of 3. Then the derivative of that natural log boxed part is going to be derivative of the argument. Derivative of x squared minus 2 is 2x over itself, x squared minus 2. And I want specifically the derivative value at 2. So h prime of 2, 2 times 2 is 4 in the numerator, 2 squared, 4 minus 2 is 2. So this will divide literally to be a 1, so it's 1 over natural log of 3. So my slope of my tangent line is 1 over natural log of 3, and the y value for my point was natural log of 2 over 2 natural log of 3. So these are not necessarily pretty numbers, but I'm going to just go ahead and leave them exact now when I write the equation of my tangent line. I like to still just keep using y, and then at the end you can change it to L of x, the linear approximation for x. Um, but again, you don't want just any x value, right? You need to be close to that point of tangency, otherwise it doesn't make sense. So y minus the y from my point, I know it's ugly, equals m times x minus the x from my point. I'll distribute and see if I can eventually combine anything here. I will add this natural log of 2 over 2 natural log of 3 to both sides. And now what I would suggest is I certainly can add these two together or combine like terms if I just multiply this fraction up here times 2 over 2. Right, then I have common denominators, so it'll be um, a natural log of 2 minus 4 over the 2 natural log of 3. 
And again, this natural log of two is its own value. And this is my linear approximations. So this is what I mean. If you want to say L of X instead of Y, that's fine as well. And you want to use this to evaluate it at 2.01. And we're going to get a decimal value anyway. So here's where we're going to go into our calculators. Okay, so depending on how many decimal places it wants you to round to will depend on certainly how many you keep. But I went through and showed where my decimals were from the calculator. So I would highly suggest you pulling out your calculator and making sure that you can type in um, this line here that I just starred and make sure that you can get that basically three tenths of an answer when you're done. So again, what we're suggesting is using that linear equation instead of uh, a log with base three, a linear equation is always going to be easier to use to approximate because it is one of the most basic or most simple equations that we have to work with. I hope you found this video on linear approximation helpful. Thanks for watching.